Hello friends, Chance here and welcome to another video of Chance Code. This video is not just about introduction like the earlier one. Instead, we have some real content to share with you all. Today we are going to discuss about one of the most commonly used API in the Java world. And it is so common that almost every Java developer might have used it even in their first program they have ever wrote in Java. Any guesses guys? Yes, it is system.out.println. So our today's topic is system.out.println. Everyone knows that this prints the given input in the terminal or console. But we are not here to discuss about that. We are here to understand how it does this. To understand it, let's try to clone this API and then try to replicate the exact functionality of system.out.println. Once the replication is done, we are going to compare the implementation done by us and the implementation done by Java. This will give a clear picture of how system.out.println works internally. So what are we waiting for? Let's jump into the IDE and start cloning it. As you can see, I have created an empty project. For this purpose, let's go ahead and create the first class of our so let's name it as test our class is ready now what main so before we are going to test the thing let's first see the existing stuff uh, what i'll do is i'll try to have our first program as you can see this is the usual the usually the first program of any java developer now let's go ahead and run it. So it started compiling. Okay, it's done and it printed hello world. Now let's go ahead and try to clone this stuff. So instead of cloning this API directly, we'll clone one by one. First, let's go ahead and clone the system. So for that, we'll create our replicated stuff. I'll name it as sys. So sys is a clone of system class now we'll make it as a final class so that nobody else can inherit it and we'll try to make it as private constructor so that nobody can instantiate it so i'll leave a message here now our system class is ready now as you notice here out is accessed directly with the class name that means the out variable here is a static class so let us go ahead and create this static variable so as you notice that i have given the class name as print stream for the out so the type of out is print stream we'll understand it understand a bit more about this now let's go ahead and complete the stuff so once out is done now out has to be initialized because it cannot be initialized through the constructor so let's go ahead and create a static block so in this static block we have to initialize this out so before we initialize let's create a file output stream because this is our main purpose we have to send some data from the program to the outer world so i'll name it as fos file output stream now we have to pass something so what i'll do is i'll pass the file descriptor dot out okay now this is done okay so output stream is ready now what, I, what i'll do out equal to new print stream and I'll pass the file output stream here. So where is the error now? Okay, so I was missing the parenthesis of the constructor. Now we are ready with this. So now let's go ahead and uh, go to the test class. So I'm in the test class now. So instead of system.out.println, what we'll try is sys.out.println. And we'll try to print some other message. Okay, now let's go ahead and run this method. Okay, as we can see, okay, we have we are quite successful in 
cloning the cis now let's go ahead and clone some more thing so what i will do is i will go to out if you see this out is of class print stream but we don't want to use the print stream because we are here to clone it so let's go ahead and clone the print stream class now what i will do is i will create another class and i'll name it as p stream okay now i'll extend it so here it is giving an error now i'll create a constructor delete this java doc okay now our print stream class is almost ready okay now what i'll do is i'll put some functionality of it so before putting functionality let's try to create the uh, let's try to remove the print stream from our sys class so instead of print stream what i'll do i'll do p stream same here p stream now it is working fine but if you'll see if you'll if i'll go into the test class and try to see printl method is not there because we haven't created that so now let's go to print stream and try to create the println method so to create the println method let's try to public void println and we'll accept a string message so now here we have to print some messages obviously since we are not doing it here uh, let's go to test class and see error is gone but let's try to print it let's try to run it as you can see nothing is printing why because this println function has nothing in inside it so let's go ahead and try to add some functionality to it now to add some functionality what i'll do is i'll call write method and i'll pass this message so write method is not present here so what i'll create i'll create a private word write message now write method is create created now i have to write some functionality here and to write some functionality so what i need is one thing is i need something called as buffered buffered writer because it has to write something and i'll name it as text out now i have to create another something called as output stream writer and i'll name it as care out so what i'll do is i'll initialize those things here so what i'll do output stream writer i'll pass this now i'll i'll initialize the buffer writer and i'll pass the character output so the, so the difference between these two is this this prints or this writes a single character whereas this writes a buffer so now we are done with this so let's go ahead and implement this so what i'll do is i'll create a synchronized block first of all so that while this write operation is happening if some other thread is going to access this it has to wait because write is in process now in this thing what i'll do is i'll i'll do text out dot write and i'll pass this message now i'll do uh, since it is print and uh, print ln so i have to do next line new line so new line is done and once the new line you went we have to flush it um, flush is done now it is saying as io exception you have to catch it so let's try to catch those things uh, instead of this i'll try to remove these things 
I'll put it here. We are almost done. Okay, now our right is also ready for us. Okay, now there is one catch here. So before we write, we have to check whether the stream is open or not. So what I'll do is I'll check whether the stream is open or not. I'll create one method called ensure open. It is not here. I'll create this method ensure open. Now if I'll check if out equal to equal to null then I'll leave a message and throw some exception saying not opened so I have to throw something now I'm ready with this cloning part of print stream class now let's go to test class and run it again as you can see, I'm back with it. So we have done the cloning part. Now let's try to understand the difference between the implementation by us and the implementation done by Java. So system.out.println versus sys.out.println. So let's go to sys class. We are having a print stream. Instead of print stream, we have p stream. And we are trying to initialize those out variable in the static block. Now let's go to system class. So here if you will see the system class, we, we are doing the same thing with the static block. It is trying to call register natives and it is having an out variable as and declared as null. And instead of p stream, they are using print stream. Now if you see this, we are trying to initialize the out variable in the static, but here they are calling some register natives. This is not this is a native method, so we are not going to care about this. Now let's go to understand this uh, where it says like vm will invoke the method okay now initialize system class this is the method which is going to be invoked by virtual machine let's go ahead and see this and if you see this we can see that file output stream is initialized with file descriptor dot out and then in by passing that we are creating a new print stream and that is going to set by set out and this set out zero is responsible to initialize the print stream whatever is created in that method and assign to the out variable which is declared which is almost same now let's go to the p stream class and compare it with the print stream class of the java so p stream is extending file output stream and then we are having buffer writer and we are having output stream writer and it is getting initialized in the p streams constructor then we are trying to print a line it calls write and which does three four things now let's go to the print stream to understand what it does so if we'll go to print stream it is almost same filter output stream it has it does some extra stuff because it is general purpose and it is there in the java thing we have tried to clone as minimal as possible now if you will see this we have buffered writer and output stream writer and if you see these things, these are getting initialized in the same way we have done in our implementation. Now, if now let's go to the println method. Println. Ah, okay. So we have got println method. Println. So there are, as you can see, there are multiple println methods here. We have tried to clone only the string parameter accepted println method. If you can see here println without parameter, boolean parameter, character, int, everything is there. And here is our stuff. It tries to call print and new line. If you see println is there, println is approximately 17 println methods are not 17 actually, 9 println plus 8. Uh, or eight print methods so print method basically prints and stays at the end of the thing and println goes to the new line if you if you see println is a combination of printing stuff and going to new line now let's go to print if it is null it is printing as null otherwise it writes and write method is almost same whatever we have implemented the only difference is here if the auto plus is true it is flushing the entire output stream directly immediate after writing it which is not covered by us we have never we haven't tried to 
clone this out of class. Hope you understand the difference between system.out.println or sys.out.println. Now as we understand the difference between these two, now let's summarize whatever we understood is correct or not. So let's jump back to the presentation. So here we are. Now let's uh, go by one by one. So we are going to system. So it is a class instead java.lang package. It's a final class so that nobody can inherit it and all the members are static so that it cannot be created an object and because of that constructor is also private. Now let's go to out. So it is also a static property in the system class and it is of type print stream which is cloned as p stream in our case and initialized in the static block we did the same thing and the default value of it is file descriptor dot out this is very important i said that this is the default value that means out can be changed to some other file where it is going to be printing the stuff now let's the difference between print and println print stream class has all these methods we already seen two variants are there and for each possible data type like integer or uh, like a string character everything it has possible methods in total we have 16 methods so hope you like this video hope you understand or the difference between system.out.println and uh, sys.out.println hope you can create your own clone by now and if you learned something some new thing from this video please do like share and subscribe to our channel thank you thanks for watching